Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's live. This is Tuesdays with Tabitha. If you have never met me before, if this is your first time meeting me, or if you haven't seen me for quite some time, my name is Tabitha Liebert, and I am an attorney, an HR manager, and a conflict management strategist. And I help professional women of faith who are overwhelmed by workplace conflict lead thriving teams with confidence. I teach them how to use all five of the conflict styles and how to succeed in the boardroom, in the conference room, in the classroom. And these skills are so highly transferable that you can lead from any room you are in. So today we are talking about conflict resolution and the topic of episode two is don't leave your team behind. Three ways to cordially direct your team to a, self, a successful outcome. Don't leave your team behind. Three ways to cordially direct your team to a successful outcome. And you might be wondering, why is this important? This episode is for you if you are a leader who needs clarity on how to balance asserting yourself when you're managing your team, and you want to balance that with making sure that your employees feel heard while you yourself are asserting yourself, leading them through whatever tasks and projects that they're doing. This episode is also for you if you want to learn how to move forward in the face of conflict and how to do that with confidence, how to do it boldly, not to shrink on the sidelines and then after the conversation is over, after the meeting is over, you're left wondering why you didn't say all of the things that are going through your mind at that time. You know, many times after the fact, you come in with all the things that you should have said. And this is where you're up at night wondering why you didn't say these things and how you can say it better next time. If you found yourself in that position before, this episode is also for you. And if you want to learn how to assert yourself without coming across as a bully or coming across as too overbearing, you know, if you want to assert yourself gracefully, this episode is for you. Because a leadership role is multifaceted. There are many, many things that make up a leadership role. As a leader, you have your own goals. You have your boss's goals and you have the goals of your direct reports. And you find yourself managing all of these goals as a leader. Your goals, you have goals as a leader to support your own family. What you do is important to you. And a, a part of it, a great part of it, is so that you can get an income to support yourself, to support your family, and to support the people you love. As a leader, another goal for you could be your personal brand, how you appear to your bosses, how you appear to, to the people who are looking to you to get the work done and depending on you to get the work done. They might be looking at how, how you manage conflict. They might be looking at you to see if the projects that you are working on are successful. So all of that comprise the goals that you have to make yourself a good manager. And then there's your team, your direct reports. They have their own goals too. And as a leader, you want to also be conscious of their goals. They want to support themselves and they want to support their families. They want to know that you care about them. They want to know if you're leading them correctly. And they want to know sometimes if you know enough to lead them. And, and your team also wants to know if they're doing a good job. So they do come into the leadership space that you are, are managing with their own goals. And then you also have, in addition to your goals, 
and the goals of your team, you also have the goals of the people you report to. If it's corporate and you're a manager, you have the goals of the C-suite. You have the goals of the owner of the company. You have the goals of the board of directors to think about. They, they have their set goals and they are always looking to see that you can manage your team to help them meet or exceed those goals. And if you are not in the corporate world, if you're an entrepreneur, you still have goals. You've invested in yourself and you're invested in the success of your business. You have financial responsibilities. You have responsibilities to your family. And you also want to see your business grow and thrive and succeed. So many times you, you find that you're balancing these goals as a leader. You're balancing your own goals. You're balancing the goals of the people you report to. And you're balancing the people who report to you. And uh, Sometimes you find that you are leading a team or you've inherited a team. And while working with that team, it's just difficult to get things done. There are different personalities at play. There's a different work ethic. There are different agendas at play, all in one team, all in one space. Sometimes they are working together Sometimes they are working remotely, but you find that all of these things affect your team that you're managing. Or sometimes you're, you're working with a team that is working well until someone else joins that team. And you find that the synergy is off and the balance of what you do is totally different from what it used to be. Now, if you find that a team is going in the wrong direction or it's not going in the direction that will take it to success. A project might not be able to move forward without that team because you need everyone on the same page. But you may have people on the team who think they know better than you might know or think that they know best for what is happening with the team. It could be that they were there before you in that team that you inherited and you are trying to strike a balance and you're trying to find a way to communicate to them that this is the path that you want to take and this is the way that you want the team to move. And you're doing that from a place of experience because this is your wheelhouse. This is what you know and you just need them to get on board you want um, for your team to be taking direction from you. And you want them to do that in a way where they feel respected, they feel supported, but they clearly understand who is in charge. And you want to do that without them bullying you. You want to be able to be directing so that your team does not face failure sometimes the options are be directing or face failure. And if you are using the directing conflict style, which is one of the five conflict styles, it is a useful when you need to get the job done and when the need for the job to be done is more important than the need to build a relationship at that particular time or when the need to get the job done is more important than the need to get the support of your peers. Now, the directing conflict style does not always help you build relationships if you use it in isolation of any other conflict styles. And you want to remember that using the directive conflict style can result in team members who are who have lesser power than you, team members who you support or who you manage, it can sometimes make them feel uh, resent, resentment. They can feel resentful because you're directing them. And sometimes if that is the only conflict style you're using, they could, use, they could lose trust in you as a director. 
So how do you direct your team to success? Here's the secret. You can take charge of your team without appearing to be rude or overbearing or without sounding like a bully. And I'll tell you how. Lisa Cash Hansen made a, has a very, very impactful quote on leadership. She says, leadership is the ability to guide others without force into a direction or decision that leaves them still feeling empowered and accomplished. Now, what would it look like if you could blend relationships, building relationships with leading a team, with meeting deadlines, and with advancing important agendas? It would look like you are a very successful leader. You would be leading a happy and thriving team. You'd be leading them all the way to success and all the way to the bank. You would be showing them how to get important tasks done and your team would be succeeding in that manner. And you would be able to effect change as a manager and someone who can resolve conflict effectively. So I have for you three tips that will help you to do that. And here's the first one. Build emotional capital with your team. Now, emotional capital is a currency of value in workplace relationships. It helps to build a level of loyalty with a team. It helps to build relationships over time. And if you build a level of loyalty with your team and you build relationships over time by being consistent, by mixing positive experiences and introducing those positive experiences into the team, it's going to build your team and build that emotional capital so that you have it when you need to direct your team, when you need to use the directing conflict style. Now, some ways to build emotional capital are to be present um, in your one-on-ones with your individual team members to build relationships with them. Always take a minute to find out how they're doing before you start discussing the work, right? It can help to build emotional capital if you have activities for your team to help them bond. And if you find ways of rewarding them, things like that build emotional capital in your team so that it sustains the relationship when you need to be directive or use the directive conflict style. Now, the second tip to help you do that is to prepare for takeoff. Understand that you will need to be more assertive. Prepare for takeoff by understanding that you will need to be more assertive and giving yourself time to prepare. So if you're gonna take off by using the directive conflict style, prepare yourself. Spend some time thinking about your approach. Review the conflict, ask questions, you know, Ask yourself these questions as you review the conflict before you step in to direct. What is happening? Where is it happening? When? Why is it happening? And how? And if you ask yourself what, where, when, why, and how, it helps you to orient yourself and understand more of the landscape that you are going to be entering in. And then know the roles of the people you work with, know their roles, understand what they're doing, and sometimes do those roles yourself. The best way to know the roles of the people who you manage is to do it yourself. And if you're an entrepreneur, try to do something for a few weeks, a month, a few months even, if you can afford it, before you hire someone on to do that job. Because it's gonna help you to know the role, it's gonna help you to understand what they're doing and you can better direct them. And they have the confidence of knowing that you've done this before. And so they trust 
that you know the role and you're directing them in the right manner. And the third step that I have for you today to help you lead your team without leaving anyone behind. So the first one was to build emotional capital. And the second was to prepare for takeoff. The third step is know your mid-flight transitions. And what do we mean? Keep handy transition phrases near you and in your pocket so that when there is conflict and you need to move into the directing conflict style, you can use these phrases. Practice these phrases. Learn how to use them. Practice them on your kids. Practice them with your friends and with, with your, your peers so that when you're ready to manage and you're moving into a directed conflict style, you have these handy transition phrases that you are able to use. And I'll give you three examples of that third tip. You can say something like, it will work best if and then you say what the direction is. Or if it's a specific profession that you're working in, you can say to the person you're directing, you know, the rules require, or the regulations require, or the laws require, or the bylaws require. That way you are actually anchoring the problem into the correct law and you're letting them know that this is the scope of what they are able to do based on the law that applies to that profession or to that situation. And the third way that you can transition into using a directing conflict style is to say, it is really important that you, and then give a reason for what you're asking. And then, you say, so I need to ask you to, and then say what you need them to do. And say that with confidence. And I'll give you an example in closing. You can say, it is really important that you circulate the agenda on Fridays so that everyone is prepared for our Monday morning meeting. I need to ask you to circulate that agenda by lunchtime on Friday. So this is another way that you can transition into the directing style, and that is something that you can practice. So you have your three steps to leading uh, with the directing conflict style and not leaving your team behind. Build emotional capital with your team. Prepare for takeoff by right? understanding that you're going to need to be more assertive and giving yourself time to prepare for that conversation. And the third tip is know your mid-flight transitions. Keep handy transition phrases near you to so help you move the discussion into a way that you can direct your team on what to do. If you need to learn how to be more directive with your team, without coming across as bossy or bullying or overbearing when you lead them. Or if you want to be a leader who can tran uh, transition through all of the five conflict styles, reach out to me by email at tabitha at marshallduke.com or send me a DM. You can see my website on the screen. You can, um, you can find ways to contact me on my website or just send me a DM to this live and I can help you do that. Thank you everyone for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye now.